the fourth quarter. Uh, uh, the Riders have broken a trend, though. The third quarter has been the Winnipeg Blue Bombers quarter, outscoring opponents by 50 points, over 50 points. And that time, the Riders outscored them in that third quarter, 10-3. Rick Carr and Carr tossed down about the 41 42 yard line and that's his first catch of the night but you're right about being more aggressive and and the big plays have been coming on for the bomber offense in the last three games they've had six passing plays over 30 yards when they want to go deep they're usually get that started with Terrence Edwards I'll give Carr eight at second and two will get the first down crashing over the 45 yard line yeah, I talked about Fred Reed's production down a little bit in his last game he had 12 for 54 the game before that 20 for 26 Jamie Barise calling the plays sticks with his script to run the ball and we asked he and Paul Lapolis about the running game being down a little bit over the last two he said he's not concerned at all part of the reason they're running a lot is because they've had leads late in the game running the fourth quarter four man rider rush and Buck Pierce going deep for Edwards and incomplete good battle there between Edwards and Chris McKenzie Now this is the guy he wants to get started with when he wants to get the ball down the field and it was a good battle because Chris McKenzie is going to show poise. He doesn't push off. He gets his arm on the back but doesn't grab Terrence Edwards jersey waits till the ball arrives and then jabs that right arm right up through the hands of Terrence Edwards. Second and ten from the 46. This time they send pressure. Pierce on loading deep again. What a great car. Jabbar. Car's got it. Well, there's the use of the mismatch. Great car at 6-6. Working against 5-8 Tristan Jackson. And I was expecting to see a bunch of that mismatch and that kind of matchup for the Bombers down near the goal line. They just haven't been down there often enough in this game this afternoon. The Brist is coming from Jarrell Freeman picked up nicely by Fred Reed that gives Buck Pierce a chance to throw he moves the pocket slightly to his left and then lets that matchup take over from there Greg Carr at six foot six come down with it first 30 plus gain of the day for the Bombers 35 yards to Carr Winnipeg leading the league now with 15 passes of 30 yards or more Pierce with a play action fake and then back to Pablo shakes a tackle Keno Pablo's got another first down brought down by Jarrell Freeman Keto Pablo comes back just a step that shows confidence in this young receiver you mentioned the great Canadian receivers that are on the verge of, of big things in this league right now Keto Pablo is one of them Corey Watson's one of them he just takes a nice aggressive step back to the football when he gets it here he's going to come back it takes confidence to not just go upfield there couple hard steps back that buys him some open space on Jarrell Freeman here's eight for 10 100 yards second half here's Fred Reed and Reed will get stopped Ramon Willis and Dario Romero there that'll set up second and actually a loss on the play this is what Paul Apolis talked about staying out of second and extras and here it'll be second and 11 there's still lots of time in this football game, so it's too early to start thinking if you're Paul LaPolice about three down football. Ball on the 19. Over the wide to the near side. Pierce in trouble. Ball pop loose. And the Red Riders are on it. Dario Romero. First takeaway for Saskatchewan. Well, the play is under review. Paul Apolise had a discussion with the officials, and 
Well, you can only protest so long you got a challenge or not, and he has thrown the challenge flag, and here's why. Yeah, they they're, want to challenge here, the Bombers, to whether or not they call this a shovel pass where Buck Pierce's arm, even though it's underhand, if it's a de deliberate attempt to shovel pass underhand, that's still considered a forward Winter pass, and there would be incomplete. An incomplete pass and not a fumble. It will be reviewed. So they're reviewing whether that was an incomplete pass on a shovel pass or was it a fumble. And it took a second for... Paul Apolise to talk to the official. He had the break, so he had a chance before he threw the challenge, but he's saying that that was a shovel pass attempt. Yeah, that's his story, but <laughs> it looks like Freeman actually knocks the arm forward. Well, you'd be the judge. Now look at it in the command center. Jarrell Freeman off the edge, and what a force he has been in recent weeks. And there's nobody there in the area that he would be passing it to. I know. It I, to. I, I know. It, this will be an interesting ruling because it, well, they didn't waste much time. If nothing else, I think they could safely say inconclusive. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It is Saskatchewan's ball. First down. I mean, he, it's clear that his arm is moving forward, but there's a few factors here that one being that there was no receiver in the area. It looked like he was almost trying to run with the football when Jarrell Freeman hit his arm forward. The ruling stands. The Saskatchewan offense was already on the field, as was the Bomber defense. Last week after the game, Marcel Belfay in the postgame congratulations told Paul, Police, Paul Apolice, your team just doesn't turn it over, but that is a critical turnover. Down by 13 in the red zone. And so the Rough Riders take over and continue to lead by 13. Wes Gates scraps for around three. By the way, we'll be in Calgary tomorrow. Double header action, Montreal Hamilton, Edmonton, Calgary. There are still a few seats available, both at Ivor Wynn and McMahon for a couple of highly anticipated games tomorrow. By the way, Wes Cates is just now just over 50 yards behind Mike Saunders for second all-time in Ryder history. You may see the football a bunch more in this final 10 minutes. We've joked about it before. He'll probably be number two, but he's not going to be number one. George Reed's numbers are safe, and a pass there out of the reach of Ephraim Hill. Yeah, he, he may get there if not this week and West Kate stays healthy next week that 50 yards to pass Mike Saunders or just over 50 but that man right there. Yep. Once he passes Mike Saunders <laughs> he's just a mere 11,719 yards away from George Reed. And if he ever did get close to George George just put the pads on and <laughs> don't play again. He just might. It's part of the pregame coin toss and ceremonies before this one. Johnson back at his 35. And Javon Johnson, boy, the downfield cover's been good for Craig Dickinson on his 40th birthday. 9-14 remaining, fourth quarter. Bombers still within reach, down by 13. But with the football, starting at their own 40-yard line. Catch for Pobla, but Tristan Jackson closed quickly. By the way, congratulations to Winnipeg Blue Bomber receiving coach Chris Wiesahan and his wife Renee celebrating the birth of Colton last night about 3 in the morning. So Chris, unable to make the trip. I'm sure he's watching, and yeah, we expect Colton is too. Yeah, absolutely. And now he needs a big play from his receiving court. Well, he's got some... Promising youngsters to work with, doesn't he? Second and six. Here's over the pocket, and there's a catch by Watson. And Corey Watson battling, and then gets driven back. Let's find out what forward progress is. It looks like he's going to be short by less than a yard. Boy, Corey Watson is uh, a tough guy to bring down. He likes the heavy going. Physical receiver. 
in his second year out of Concordia. Still looking for his first 100 yard game of his career. That's going to happen sooner rather than later. Second on the team, though, in second down conversion catches. Now, this one's going to be just short, but short enough that the Bombers can go ahead on third and less than one. And a good surge for Pierce. Again behind Brendan Labatt. Oh, check that Alex Brink, excuse me, on the third and shorts. A lot of teams going to that now, bringing in their backup. The, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders don't. Yeah, and uh, he may be the only Darian Durant. I think the he only is. One. Yeah, I think he is the only guy in the league that stays out there on the third down. Gambles. Rough Riders were stopped on a third down gamble earlier. The Bombers have a perfect record in that department on third and a yard or less so far this year. Up across their own 50 yard line, Pierce, Crosser, Watson again. And Corey Watson spins into Rough Rider territory. Wendy's kick for a million back. Your chance to be one of four to go head to head to qualify for the live halftime show. Enter at tsn.ca slash Wendy's plus visit Wendy's to get a game cup and get bonus entries down to the wire. Yes, it is. A couple days left to get your entry in. Under six and a half to go here. Hand off the read and Brett Reed brought down short of the first down. Had to get to the 49. He did not reach the 50. When you hear about coaches talking about tendencies, well, Saskatchewan Rough Riders know the tendency of the Bombers on second and two or three. They're going to go to Fred Reed, and they load up the block box here by bringing eight down into the area to try and stop the run on Fred Reed, including their safety, Craig Butler. Linebacker James Patrick gets involved in that tackle as well. Richie Hall. Saw the tendency from the Bombers on second and medium to run the ball and he loaded up the box. So now it's third and it's over a yard. And it is Pierce and it's Reed. And I'm not sure. He falls forward. Great second effort by Fred Reed. It looked like he was in the grass short. See where they spot it. Riders indicating they think they've got to stop. And the spot comes back and I think they do based on where that football was put down. Al Bradbury calling out the chains. Real good move by Fred Reed to even make it close, but it's going to be real close. Looks like they had to get closer to the 49 than. Then Reed was able to do, but the chains will tell you. And it is short. First time this year, the Bombers turn it over on downs. Saskatchewan football when we come back. Now Fred Reed comes up short. Not sure the Winnipeg fans would like to see the like the spot they got Let's yeah I, I'm not sure about this spot this spot certainly favors the home team you're thinking it should be up about there and it ends up back about I don't know about 12 inches back from that looked like forward progress that evens the turnover count ball downfield and the flag does come out and it looks like it would Dallas Baker was all tied up and the P.I. call made against Brandon Stewart and no question here. I have Brandon Stewart had the cloth of Dallas Baker and did not let go. You can get you can get away from away with it if you grab quickly and then forward passing. Winnipeg, number eight. You can see First he goes down. he goes about ten yards pulling down the jersey of Dallas Baker and that draws the flag and it will every time. But I know Bomber fans still upset about 
the last spot on third down and according to the officials up here in the box Paul Lapolis still has a timeout therefore still could have challenged although those third down challenges are awful difficult Dallas Baker spent the bye week here with Darian Durant to try and get on the same page Wes Keats and we've got a scrap going on between James Robinson and Brandon Stewart and another flag comes down and which way is this one going is it back to back against Stewart or is this one going against the Rough Riders? This one isolated well away from the play. And when you consider next week and it's a short week, you've got still 65 minutes of this intensity to go between these two teams. And as you know, as a player that's been involved, oh, man. it's always completely different the next week. <laughs> Except different. for the intensity. And no matter, you know, no matter what the records of the teams. Unnecessary roughness. Saskatchewan number three. Major foul disqualification. Winnipeg, number eight. Wow. The difference is 10 yards on the previous line of scrimmage. First down. Disqualification. So Brandon Stewart's afternoon is over. Let's find out why. Cut off the line by James Robinson and started swinging. 